Inclusiveness has been at the heart of Pope Francis's vision for the church. There's no more striking example of this than the Pope's embrace of people with disabilities. Images of Francis laughing with, kissing, hugging people with special needs have gone viral and touched the hearts of millions. In a homily earlier this summer, the Pope had strong words for parishes that fail to welcome those with special needs. When he says parishes need to be inclusive, if they're not, parishes should shut their doors. He's giving a very clear signal that the time is now to move into action. And that's what we're trying to do. Steve Riley has made it his mission to bring the Pope's message to the church in the United States. He heads a unique nonprofit in the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C. called Potomac Community Resources, PCR, which targets an often overlooked group, teens and adults with special needs. The reason we focus on teens and adults is because when children who have special needs are in school, they have access to programs and services by virtue of being students. And then the little bus stops coming, and uh, very often people are you know, consigned to a life of going home and watching television, if they're lucky. With that in mind, PCR offers an array of programming aimed at personal growth, inclusiveness, and just plain fun. I like seeing a lot of good friends, going to the Halloween dance, and the beach party. I go to yoga, and um, I really like it. Exercise on Wednesday. Speech and Thursday Calling. chorus. Potomac Community Resources is a unique collaboration between the church and the nonprofit world. It was born in a suburban Maryland parish two decades ago. Parishioners came together and asked their pastor to join them in building a more inclusive and accommodating church community. Today, PCR is still housed in the same parish, but it's grown into an independent nonprofit offering programs far beyond the parish community and to people of every faith. The starting point when we are working with people with special needs, we all reflect the glory of God. Cardinal Donald Worrell, Archbishop of Washington, D.C., has led the way in making his diocese a place of inclusion for people with disabilities. He's encouraged Potomac Community Resources to develop similar programs in six other parishes across his archdiocese. He's also established a Department of Special Needs Ministries and an annual mass to celebrate the gifts of people with disabilities. When Pope Francis paid a visit to Washington, D.C. last September, the archdiocese invited a woman with Down syndrome to serve as a lector at the papal mass. Brothers and sisters, Rejoice in the Lord always. As I say it again, rejoice. She did the reading splendidly, even though when she got up there, it took her a moment to uh, just remind herself she could do this. When she stepped down and walked back, she just looked at me and nodded as if to say, you see, I did it. The beautiful part of having everybody who's a part of the family be a part of the liturgy, be a part of whatever we're doing. As the Archdiocese of Washington makes strides to realize Pope Francis's vision of an inclusive church, researchers at Georgetown Center for Applied Research in the Apostolate are studying the U.S. church as a whole. This week, they've released a first-ever national study of inclusion of people with disabilities in parish life. One of the biggest takeaways of the survey was the importance of inviting parishioners with special needs into positions of real leadership. Parishes that have people with special needs on their committees and in ministerial roles are a lot more likely to have a lot more uh, inclusive activities and also inclusive accommodations, physical accommodations in the parish. One of the simplest things a parish can do is simply a conscious, deliberate way of inviting parishioners with disabilities to participate in a whole array of ministries and in the life of the parish. For Steve Riley, welcoming people with disabilities into parish life isn't just something optional. It's a crucial part of evangelization. 
I've seen examples where families that include children or siblings with developmental differences who had felt unwelcome at their local parish have essentially left the church and stopped coming to church because they felt unwelcome. Uh, and I've just seen the difference that it makes in the lives of the people uh, to have a child who they never thought perhaps would be able to uh, participate in the sacramental life of the church, welcomed and received First Communion or Confirmation or Penance. Monsignor John Ensler has been part of Potomac Community Resources since the beginning. He was pastor of the Maryland Parish where Steve Riley and other concerned parents came together to create PCR. He has this advice for church leaders in similar situations. When someone in your parish comes and says, can you help us as a pastor, which is case director, as a as administrator, just say yes, can we talk, can we listen? A parish should and must, in fact, must I'd say, be involved in this issue. If not, we're not the kind of parish we need to be. For America Media, I'm Ashley McKinless, reporting from Washington, D.C.